We know that you know that the 50th anniversary of the moon landing happened last Saturday. But hey, guess what? The 50th anniversary of the moon landing happened last Saturday. So we're here today to bring you some of the more interesting, more exciting parts of the whole thing for you to sound super smart while you continue celebrating. Let's get ready for blast off. This is Fascinating Facts About Apollo 11. 14. Dumber Than a Toaster We're going to kick this thing off by telling you just how unsophisticated the Apollo guidance computer was. Back in the day, the technology in both the command and lunar modules was cutting edge, and hey, it's what they had. But if you stack it up against what we've got today, it goes down hard. That's because not long ago, Computer Weekly reported that the electronics in the AGC were more basic than those found in modern day toasters. You know, the ones with the different options, defrost, start, and stop? Toaster technology flew us to the moon. They compared its computing power to that of a pocket calculator. You'd think we'd be across the universe with the technology we've got now. 13. The Initial Apollo Program When the Apollo program first began, NASA initially wanted to send a crew of astronauts into the moon's orbit and then back to Earth. They didn't plan on JFK declaring we would land a man on the moon in his famous speech to Congress on May 25, 1961. We weren't going to land on the moon at all. Can you imagine a world without the famous quote, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind? Can you imagine not having ever visited our closest celestial neighbor? Whoa. 12. The Mission Patch Do you know the Apollo 11 Mission Patch? You know, the patch with the bald eagle landing on the pocked surface of the moon with our very own beautiful planet in the background? Well, each Apollo crew got the opportunity to draw and design their own patch. And Michael Collins, command module pilot for the mission, is responsible for the patch as we know it. It is a beautiful thing and was made absolutely legendary by the success of the mission. There's no end to the impressive talents and abilities astronauts possess. 11. How in the heart rate? So, if you've ever experienced a scary or exciting event, you know perfectly well how the heart can speed up, right? The resting heart rate of an average male is between 60 and 100 beats per minute, while trained athletes, which these guys were, can have a resting heart rate as low as 40 beats per minute. What's extraordinary is how slowly the hearts of these astronauts beat during intense stages of the mission. During takeoff, Buzz Aldrin's heart clocked in at an incredible 88 beats per minute, while Colin's heartbeat stayed at 99 beats per minute, and Armstrong's at 110 beats per minute. Stepping onto the moon for the first time, an excited Armstrong's heart was beating at 112 beats per minute, faster than when he was violently launched into space. Things really got going though around touchdown back on Earth, as Armstrong's heart rate was 156 beats per minute. That's pretty good, considering our heart rates probably would have been somewhere in the mid 300s. 10. It was in the family. This might sound crazy, but Buzz Aldrin may have been destined to be an astronaut on the first ever journey to the moon. Hear us out. Before Buzz's mother, Marion Aldrin, married his father, Edwin Eugene Aldrin Sr., her last name wasn't Aldrin. What was it? Moon. Her name had been Marion Moon. And if that doesn't tickle your destiny senses, we don't know what will. Can you imagine if we'd had a Buzz Moon on the first crewed mission to the moon? 9. The Failure Speech Now it can't be a total shocker that there was a speech prepared for the world in case something went wrong during the Apollo 11 mission. NASA officials were prepared for any scenario of historical significance, and the mission to the moon was no different. The Failure Speech was written by speechwriter William Sapphire, who composed one speech in case the mission was a success, and one in case it ended disastrously. The one we didn't hear is called In the Event of Moon Disaster and is somber and sad. How about this for an opening line? Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. Brutal. We're sure glad we don't have any astronaut bones resting on the moon. 8. The Important People 
We already know that millions of people tuned their televisions into the launching of the Saturn V rocket. But did you know quite a few VIPs got courtside seats? Well, if you consider courtside to be about three and a half miles away from the launch pad, just in case something crazy happened, but it was still closer than most others got to the action. A few spectators in attendance that day were celebrities in many different fields. Charles Lindbergh, the famed aviation pilot, was in attendance. Of course, Johnny Carson and Ed McMahon made it too, as did comedian Jack Benny. Then Vice President Spiro Agnew and former President Lyndon Johnson. It was quite the star-studded affair, fitting for a groundbreaking flight into the stars. 7. I'll Take a Seltzer For some reason, there was an issue with the hydrogen gas filters on the Apollo spacecraft, making all of the astronauts' drinking water a bit bubbly. This is because the water was a fuel cell byproduct, which caused the hydrogen and oxygen molecules to bind together imperfectly while forming H2O. These extra bubbles in the water created a perfect storm of excess flatulence aboard the ship. And you can imagine that had to be a little hard in such tight quarters. Michael Collins wrote of the smells on board. These bubbles produced gross flatulence in the lower bowel, resulting in a not-so-subtle and pervasive aroma, which reminds me of a mixture of wet dog and marsh gas. It sounds like it was one heck of a party up there. 6. An Overworked System Did you know that the Eagle Lander's computer was going to put Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong down elsewhere on the moon? In a boulder-strewn, steep crater, that's where. That's because the ride in hadn't exactly been easy on the vehicle and it was rapidly running out of fuel, so it wasn't entirely thinking straight. Luckily, Armstrong was, took control, and flew the craft manually to a new location about four miles from where the lunar module was originally trying to set down. They landed, and things worked out. But they were only around 16 seconds from running out of fuel, which had to be terrifying. 5. Luna 15 of course, the Soviet Union didn't want the United States to get to the moon first. They were the first in space, the first to send a woman into space, and they obviously wanted to be in control when it came to the moon. The US kept pushing and managed to land humans there on July 20th, 1969, but not before the Soviets tried one last trick to pull glory away from the Americans. Luna 15 was an unmanned lunar craft whose primary goal was to bring a soil sample back from the lunar surface and return it to Russia. It launched just three days prior to Aldrin, Armstrong, and Collins, and its goal was to land before the astronauts could. There were problems though, and it wasn't ready to descend to the moon's surface until July 21st, 1969, a day after the first moonwalk. It was the Soviet's second attempt to gather a soil sample and return it to Earth. The first mission, E-85402, failed because the third stage of the launch vehicle didn't ignite. Luna 15 crashed not long after descent began, and it's believed it probably ran into the side of a mountain. 4. One Man's Solitary Confinement Michael Collins, the guy most often left out when people talk about the moon landing spent some of the time he was waiting for Armstrong and Aldrin in an extraordinary way. Colin stayed back in the command module while the other two explored the surface. Aldrin and Armstrong were away for 22 hours, during which Collins orbited around the dark side of the moon several times. Each time he spent 47 minutes on the other side. Think about that. He spent 47 minutes with no radio communications and no view of home all alone. Not only that, but he was separated from all of humanity, including his fellow astronauts, by the entire body of the moon for 47 minutes. Back on Earth, he said if a count were taken, the score would be 3 billion plus 2 over on the other side of the moon and 1 plus God knows what on this side. 3. The Wright Brothers Plane Did you know that some of the pieces of the plane belonging to the legendary Wright Brothers made their way up into space with the Apollo 11 crew? That's right, prior to beginning the trip, the Air Force contacted Neil Armstrong to see if he'd be interested in taking them up and even offered him half of what he took on board. 
Armstrong loved flying and was enthusiastic about the idea, and that was that. Pieces of the first plane in flight inside the first ever craft to make a daring trip to the surface of the moon? It sounds entirely fitting. 2. An audience far, far away. Now, the moon landing was widely watched around the world, and it was that day in July of 1969 that inspired the hearts and minds of those watching and the generations since. What kind of draw did such an event have? Well, records suggest that the number of people watching the broadcast of the first ever moon landing was around 650 million. 650 million people watched one event that unfolded roughly 238,900 miles away from us. That's over six times more than the last Super Bowl. Even people at Disneyland took a break from all of the fun to watch Armstrong step onto the moon. Crazy to think all of this happened 50 years ago. We've learned some excellent stuff about Apollo 11 already, and we still have one more great fact to go. But first we'd like to ask, were you alive when these guys set foot on the moon? If so, where were you? What were you doing? If not, what's your best space-related memory? Let us know in the comments below. 1. They almost had a big problem. All right, so ultimately these incredible astronauts made it through training, taking off on Earth, traveling through space, landing on the moon, and walking on it, before Buzz Aldrin almost ruined everything. As Neil and Buzz climbed back inside the lunar module after their moonwalk, Aldrin's life support backpack smacked the circuit breaker switch and broke it right off. The switch was responsible for activating the module's ascent engine, which represented the only way for them to get off the face of the moon and back up to Collins and the command module. Then Aldrin remembered he had a felt-tipped pen on him, and in a moment of inspiration, he used the pen to activate the switch inside and engage the circuit breaker. It completed the circuit, the engine fired, and the rest is history. Both the pen and the broken switch for the circuit breaker can be found on display in Seattle, Washington at the Museum of Flight. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and give it a like. Subscribe to our channel below or by clicking on our logo right here so that you never miss out on any of our informative uploads. And be sure to check out this next video we picked out just for you.